I asked on YouTube and Instagram if any of you fine folks had any questions for me, and they came flooding in. Way too many to make one video, so I broke all 120 some odd questions into categories, and in this video we'll answer some of the interesting random ones. But let's start with one of the most repeated questions, which is where I got these miniature luggages and bags. These are all from something called Gachapon. But what the hell is that, right? Check it out. This shop is in the heart of Shibuya in Tokyo, and it is two floors of wall-to-wall, floor-to-ceiling gachapon, which are capsule toy vending machines. And they have stuff for freaking everyone. Are you a metal fabricator? Gotcha. Dental professional? Yep. Gambler, photographer, pasta lover, home cook, pro cook, teacher, introvert, DIYer, scientist, cafe hopper, musician, warehouse worker, instant ramen nut, interior designer, and yes, traveler. People are obsessive collectors, and as you can see, squads of friends can make a fun outing together out of it. Now, even though these are ubiquitous in places like Taiwan and Japan, if you live somewhere that has an Asian supermarket, chances are they have a bank of gachapon vending machines near the entrance. Next question, with all that traveling, which languages do you speak and at what levels? Well, if we assume my first language, English, is a 10 out of 10, Si je le dois, je peux parler et comprendre un petit peu de français, mais la plupart du temps, ma grammaire est probablement incorrecte. Et espagnol, igual que mi français, aproximadamente un 4 ou 5 de 10. Mon de zongwen, ji ben gou tong, ingai mei wen ti, kenen liu chi su fen ba. Beyond those, there are a few other languages where I'd float myself at, I don't know, 2 out of 10, and I define 2 as not just being able to comfortably speak the basics, but more critically, able to understand and engage to responses. So, if someone in Iran or some parts of Afghanistan were to say, thank me for any reason, depending on the context of that gratitude, a 2 out of 10 means that I would know whether to respond with Khoesh Mikhonam or Negaronesh Nabosh or Bozor Tarigovtan Kuchik Tarigovtan. That back and forth is key because adventurous folks often want to learn how to say X, Y, or Z, and it's easy enough to learn how to ask a shopkeeper in Tokyo, Sabimasen, kore wa ikura desu ka? But if you only learn how to ask, it wouldn't do you much good if you don't also learn Japanese currency related vocabulary to understand their responses. And the one phrase I learned before going anywhere new, math, sayahanya tahu bahasa ingres. Next up, not sure if you talked about it, but I'm always curious about your job and what you are doing for a living. Well, I did talk about it, and if you want more context, you can check out this video, which I'll link down in the description next to the timestamp of your question. But short answer, video agency and a metal fabrication workshop, both B2B. The next question is sort of related. How do you balance the overseas work with your machine work at home? Is it your own business? And the answer is yes. Both the video agency and metal fab are entrepreneurial endeavors, and all the business abroad is directly related to both. The next most asked question had to do with these. Ultimately, where to get the superior labor pen clips. Superior labor are a small workshop in Japan. They are perpetually in global short supply because they're truly a small business. I will say that if you don't necessarily need the dual pen clip, you may consider getting this super strong magnetic leather wrapped one instead that holds one pen. In my experience, buying superior labor products frequently as gifts for other people, these are more readily available. That said, the best way to secure one is to Google superior labor pen clip plus your city or country, find the nearest authorized dealer, Go to their sold out product page and click that notify me when back in stock button and plug in your email. Next question, were you born and brought up in Canada? I was my mother's belly in Canada and while she was pregnant with me, my parents visited extended family in Taiwan. But then I came knocking weeks before my expected due date. So I was born there, then came back to Canada shortly after birth. And I can confidently say I was the ugliest infant I've ever seen. My mom disagrees, so you decide in the comments whether you agree with me or my mom. But to me, yikes. Next up, how do you decide what kinds of tech, accessories, and clothing to invest in? I suppose my general philosophy on spending money is the exact same no matter what the product or service I'm considering is. My first consideration is, will this enable me to earn more money than it costs within 12 months of buying it? Next, if it's something that definitely won't earn money, like say, a vacuum cleaner, the next question I ask is, will I use this at least once a week? 90 plus percent of the time, if the answer is no, then I just don't buy it. For the other 10% of things I won't use at least once a week, I calculate the projected cost per use by taking the price, dividing it by the number of years I reasonably expect it to be in my life, and then divide again by the number of times per year I anticipate using it. That gives me the projected cost per use, and if I feel like I would be willing to pay at least that much to rent it each time I use it, then I buy it. If not, I don't. Finally, for anything that I just want, like this or this, my rule here is simple. Whenever I'm tempted by something I won't actually benefit my life in any way other than making me smile, 
I take a picture of it. Literally, if I'm on a website, I'll take my phone out and take a picture of the computer screen. I have to wait two weeks from when the photo was taken. If I still want it after two weeks, then generally I allow myself to buy it. But more than 99% of the time, I literally don't even remember even seeing it after two weeks, let alone remember wanting. It's astonishing how often I scroll through my phone's photo album and I'm genuinely confused as to why there's a photo of say, a shark costume. Moving to the next question, what's your favorite book? I don't think I have a single favorite book, but I can easily identify the most impactful books. The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss opened my eyes to a lot of theory, but despite having tons of actionable items, didn't initially motivate me to dive into entrepreneurship. The next two books are actually on loan to friends right now, but The $100 Startup by Chris Gilbo was able to give me multiple real examples as case studies to take the theoretical eye-opening I got from the 4-Hour Workweek and motivate me to act. The Win Without Pitching Manifesto by Blair Enns is what enabled me to take the fear and stigma out of the word sales and press it into service to actually go from having a business idea to actually being in business by consistently bringing money in. Here's a fun one. Favorite bubble tea order, assuming you drink it, and if not, cocktail. I used to drink bubble tea, but those days are over. In my day-to-day -day life in Toronto, I drink four things. 80% water, 10% coffee, 8% Zevia, and 2% is whiskey. Always neat. The next question was also asked quite a few times, which is along the lines of, if you were to start a new YouTube channel from scratch, how would you do it? The first two things I do before even hitting record are one, come up with 10 completely separate video ideas for the topic I want the channel to be about and plan out the talking points. I do that 10 times, so I'm already set up with a plan to get the ball rolling. Secondly, for each of those 10 videos, spend time to really write the first one to three sentences of the video and ask yourself, how can I refine these sentences to immediately cause the viewer to ask themselves a question that will make them want to stick around to the end of the video to find out? I'm not talking about starting the video with a question to the viewer infomercial style like, have you ever wondered what the best city to travel to on a budget is? That's a simple yes, no question that you're directly asking them. I'm talking about saying things that cause the viewer to ask themselves a question. So a congruent example intro might be, I accidentally discovered that Saigon is the most budget-friendly place to travel to, but only if you plan three critical parts of your trip in advance, with the hopes that the question the viewer will ask themselves is, huh, I wonder what those three things are. After that, it's about learning how to package videos with effective titles and thumbnails. But not only am I still learning all about that, but that alone can be a full video by itself. Someone asked, ever travel to Germany? Swing by Hamburg. I have been to Germany. I was a b-boy for many years in my youth and one of the biggest international breaking or breakdancing events called Battle of the Year was held annually in a town called Braunschweig, about two hours south of Hamburg. And I can't wait to go back to Germany. Next up, what was your job in the Canadian military? This is important to make clear in no uncertain terms. At no point in my life did I ever serve my country in the military. All consulting I did in irregular warfare and hostile environments was 100% in the private sector and not done out of altruism, but rather in an attempt to earn money. As a delinquent teen and high school dropout, I realized relatively quickly at that time that in order to earn a reasonable living without an education, there were three main options. One, entrepreneurship, two, high commission sales, or three, doing things that most folks are unwilling or afraid to do. I didn't have the capital, knowledge, or skills to pursue options one or two at the time. And as for three, I've always had a strange lack of fear in the face of conflict in any context, no matter how high the stakes. So option three, as an uneducated young person, was the only direction I felt I could choose at the time. That said, if Canada were ever to come under attack, I'd be one of the first in line to tool up and stand on guard for the, it'd be a non-decision. Next random question, which of your videos is your favorite? After some consideration, it's gotta be the lessons I learned in the time after my father was murdered. It's my favorite not because it's about my dad and not because it has a ton of views, because it doesn't, but because I feel it has the greatest potential impact for people, regardless of whether or not they are affected by the murder of a loved one. Those lessons have monumentally helped me in how I process and prioritize my life in general. And if you want some insight into those three tremendous lessons I learned, I welcome you to watch it right up here. But if that feels too heavy for your current session, feel free to check out how I embarrassed myself trying to impress a girl right down here. I'll leave them both on screen for a few seconds so you can choose which one to watch. But while you're deciding, consider liking, subscribing, and hitting that bell so you'll be notified the moment new videos just like this one drop. And I can't wait to answer the rest of the many wonderful questions in a future video.